You might have noticed we're trying a few different things out on Body Talk recently. This is going to be our World Food series because we know how much you love your world food. And where are we starting? A Rogan Josh curry. We're going to make our own curry paste with some whole spices, garlic, ginger, chilli. We're going to cook obviously the chicken off of that with extra onion and tomato. A cashew nut milk to make it super creamy. Wow. And then we'll serve it with rice as well. Okay. So first up, whole spices. When you're making curry pastes, it's best to start with the whole spices. In here, cumin seeds, fennel seeds, whole peppercorns and cloves. And they're just going to go into a pan with some hot oil to toast off. Next up, garlic. If you can do two cloves of garlic, I'm going to do a little bit of ginger. Now obviously you can just buy a Rogan Josh curry paste, but I think when you make your own, it is just so much fresher. And you can personalise it if you want it a bit spicy, if you want a bit more ginger in there, you can do it. Yeah, so we've also got in here some chilli, one onion, a couple of cloves of garlic, some ginger. If you pass over our spice grinder, they're all going in there. Turn it over and that goes onto our machine. And that is a beautiful homemade curry paste. Have a smell. Oh, wow. That can now go on to our meat of choice. In this dish, chicken thigh. Lovely. So if you can just give that a quick stir around. And while you're stirring that, I'm just going to take a second onion. So we've got one in our curry paste. This is our second one, and I'm just going to slice that nice and fine. So in our pan, we've got some ghee, a couple of tablespoons of that. So it's a fermented clarified butter. They're using a lot in Indian food. And to that, we can add our sliced onions. Mm along with one cinnamon stick and we're going to cook that until those onions go nice and translucent. Lovely. In the meantime, a couple of tomatoes. If you can just kind of quarter those. Yeah. This isn't a tomato based curry, but it has got a couple of tomatoes in it. So it's literally okay. two tomatoes for all of this with a tiny blob of tomato puree. Yep. It's not too tomato -y, but it is there. And ideally, this chicken would marinate in this curry paste for a good hour or two. Today we're going to move straight on just so we can show you the process, but marinating it is always going to help. And when you're frying onions for curry, top tip, a little bit of salt at this stage helps to draw some of the moisture out of those onions and stops them from burning, but they caramelise quicker. Oh, really? It kind of cooks them a bit quicker. Oh, nice. With the onions beginning to soften, go translucent, just before they colour too much, we add in our chicken and all of that curry paste. And this is where the aroma really starts, yeah. when those spices hit the pan. And as if that's not enough spices, we're also going to add cayenne pepper, garam masala, ground cardamom and paprika. Okay. All in very precise measurements, you can get those down below, so no one overpowers the other. Mix those in. All of our quarter tomatoes go in there as well. Dollop of tomato puree. I, just, I can't explain to you how amazing this smells. And they're only just beginning to come yeah. together now. A little bit of chicken stock. Just enough to cover the chicken. And then we're going to bring it up to a boil and let it simmer for about 20 minutes, really gently, to kind of cook that chicken out. And then we finish it off with our creamy cashew nut milk. Next up, on the topic of rice. Now, some people are so scared of cooking rice. Yeah, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Lots of different ways of doing it, lots of ways of getting it wrong, but one way of getting it absolutely right every time, rice, basmati rice, into a bowl. Literally just about a fingernail depth. Yep. We've got two star anise, a cinnamon stick, some ground cardamom, and a generous pinch of salt. And then pour over enough hot water to cover it, and do the same volume again. Cover that with tin foil, and then that can go into an oven, 180 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Take it out, take off the tin foil, give it a stir, and put it back for a final 10, and it'll be perfect rice every time. Right in that water was boiling when it went over. Yep. Next up, this is so simple. Some cashew nuts into a blender with a glass of water. Just slightly warm water. Great. Blend it up, and you'll end up with a really thin milk. Yeah. I've never heard of this before. So is this how you do almond milk as well? Um, very similar process. Okay. Very similar process. And coconut milk, much the same. To plate up our curry, we need to do the finishing touches to this. So our cashew nut milk going in there. And if you want to give that a good stir through, it really mellows out the spice in the curry. Meanwhile, I've got some natural yogurt. All I'm going to add into that is a squeeze of lemon juice and some fresh chopped coriander. Now we would love to hear about your curry cooking experiences. Have you got any tips? What's your favourite curry to cook? Let us know in the comments down below. We can dig out a portion of this, a couple of the tomatoes, chicken thigh or two, plenty of that curry sauce, last little bit of fresh coriander. We can just peel that off. Oh, look at that. You should get nice individual grains. You can smell the star anise and cinnamon in there. I'll peel our rice. 
with chicken, Rogan Josh curry, a nice yogurt dressing. Grab a fork and dig in. Oh, that is fantastic. Absolutely gorgeous. I think this with the cashew milk has to be one of my favourite curries. If you want to give it a go, then head to sortedfood.com for all the recipe and ingredients. And if you want more world food, make sure you're subscribed to Body Talk.